So as promised, I told you I was going to do a more serious video today. Um, because a lot of you asked me why me and Christine call each other twin cousins and all of that. Well, we do have a lot of things in common. Um, and a lot of the things are due to either health or mental health or whatnot. And so today's video, I'm going to share with you a little bit about my anxiety disorder and what it's been like my entire life of living with it. Um, I guess the, the, the way I look at it is I have a problem with either, I either, it's fight or flight, basically. Um, my anxiety, when my anxiety kicks in, I either push people away uh, or hide and run away and I can't deal with it, or I get really aggravated and I, and I yell and I scream and I throw basically like a tan temper tantrum and I just can't help it. Um, so, um, I guess we could get into a little bit of this. I'm sorry, I haven't had anything to drink, so I'm like shaking, my blood sugar's dropping, so. Some massive pixie. But, okay. So I've always had a problem with anything new in my life. Anything new, like, freaks me out. Um... And this has caused problems in my entire life and with friendships and relationships with my family and my friends. Um, like I said, this one's going to be um, basically fight or flight. Um, my problem is, is with my anxiety, say, um, okay, like my friend back when I was younger asked me to go to her house in PA because I'd never been there before and she's like come on we'll go to Kennywood we'll go do all this fun stuff and I was like yeah yeah I'm so for it and as the time got closer to going I started getting anxious about it because it was a new place and I had never spent the night in a different um, city let alone in another um, state so I started getting nervous about it and as I as I my anxiety started kicking in I went into flight mode which is um, a problem I have where I I literally would I was like oh no no I can't go I I'm just I have things to do or I have I can't even remember the excuse I gave her, honestly. It was so many times she asked me to go, and she finally just quit asking me to go. Um, I, I have a problem, and I, I, I try not to do this, and I can't help it. Um, <clears throat> my mother has a problem, I guess I could say, with um, leaving her house. I guess it's kind of like agor agoraphor agoraphobia. Um... Where she doesn't like to leave her house and she doesn't like to go new places she doesn't like to go anywhere she just does not like to do anything everything makes her anxious so i guess i get this from my mother in a way and my father's side so i'm kind of like double whammied and back in the day i i've been i have improved in this but as of recently i have had more so of a problem of dealing with new things um I think a lot of it happened because when I moved back from South Carolina, in South Carolina I didn't do anything. I stayed home. I basically stayed home a lot. And when I did go out, I was drinking. I would go out drinking and partying because that was the only way that I could deal with being somewhere new and doing something different. So. I, I think because I was doing better with it I was able to work work actually helped me get over that a lot of being scared of new people because I used to be scared of new people I used to be very socially 
I used to have a lot of social anxiety. I used to be very awkward and didn't want to talk to anybody and didn't want to do anything new. I didn't want to leave my I didn't want to leave my house. I didn't want to make new friends. I just I just wanted to um be like to myself. And I spent a lot of time in my bedroom doing absolutely nothing. And um I would eventually start getting really aggravated because my friends would just be like, why do you keep bailing on me? Why do you keep bailing on me? This is getting crazy. You keep bailing on me. What the frick is the problem? And they started feeling like I just didn't want to hang out with them. And that wasn't the, the thing at all. So I would literally lash out. And I would either lash out at myself or I would lash out at them. And that is where the, the fight part comes in on my anxiety. Um, so, I guess this kind of just happened between me and Christine, um, and I try not to do this. I really do. I try not to do this, and I, even with Christine, even though we're really, really close, it's hard, for, I mean, it is hard for me to get to her house. And it's hard for me to like spend the night at our house because of I do have responsibilities, but there has been times that you know I I could spend the night, but I got so like I don't know. It's not that I didn't I don't trust Christine and I don't trust her house or anything like that. It's just flight. I um freak out and I. I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna do it from home. And it actually caused problems between me and Christine and her trust in me. And I didn't, I didn't try to do that. And my anxiety, I kind of try not to let it rule my life, but I, there's certain things that I'm trying to work on, but again, and, and another, you know, I, I do have that problem where I, I like, get aggravated, and I just push people away, and I'm just like, you know what, I don't want to talk to you anymore because you don't understand. Um, I try to, some people I've tried to explain it to, and they just don't understand, or there's the other thing of, I get overwhelmed really, really easy with things, and there was a time where I had this friend that had a lot of her own issues and it got to the point where I was like giving her advice, giving her advice, um, and trying my hardest to help her. While dealing with my own stuff, I was trying to help her and I would watch her basically not go with the advice I was giving her and going in another direction, which was not a healthy direction. And it would make me anxious. So I just finally was like, you know what? I don't want to talk to you anymore. So I just completely blocked her out of my life. I didn't want to talk to her anymore. I was like, I'm done. And I still don't really talk to her. I She contacted me and I was like, you know what? I, I can't. I'm not your therapist. I can't do this anymore. And it's not me trying to be a bad friend. It's just that she was doing very unhealthy things. And because I'm trying to work on fixing myself, I didn't want to be around that kind of situation, I guess you could say. Um, but it does, it causes problems with everyone. I was always the black sheep of the family because I. I had a lot of different issues where I just didn't, I didn't want to do new things. I didn't want to deal with people. I just wanted to be by myself. Um, I had a hard time making friends in school. And when I did make friends in school, it was always the bad people that I would hang out with. I would always hang out with people that would eventually just pick on me. And then I would cry and I would get bullied. And I would go home and I'd cry to my dad. And I'd go home and I'd cry. And I'd go home and I'd cry. 
because it got to the point where these people that I thought were my friends were really, they were just picking on me because they, again, did not know how to handle the fact of how I was. A lot of these problems stem from um, my home life. Um, I don't want to get into too much of it because it's, it's hard for me to talk about my past because then it brings up a lot of things and then it makes me anxious and I've been anxious a lot lately and that's due to the new the new um, diagnosis I've been giving get, be getting and, and dealing with just a lot of stress so again flight or fight I've literally been either fighting with my husband or fighting with my friends or I just shut down and don't touch them at all. And Sorry, that was my email. Um so I, I I had a lot of problems in my household. I um had a lot of abuse problems in my life. Um physical and mental abuse from family, from friends, from boyfriends, and it made it really hard to trust anyone because I had a lot of those issues. When I was younger, like really, really little, I had a lot easier time and trusting people and doing new things and having fun and just being a great person to be around. And, and then the things started happening at home. Um, I would say it was it was fairly right around the time or before my sister passed away. It was when my sister was getting really, really sick. And there was also a time where um, my grandparents, who are both now gone, they're gone, um, they were fighting a lot. And a lot of the times the fights were brought to my house. And it was not a very comfortable place for me to be, being younger. And I spent a lot of time with my brother and we were very close and my my mother was well first it started with my mother being a pretty big alcoholic and then my dad started being an alcoholic so alcoholism was a big part of my life and I would watch them fight together and fight and fight me and my brother would go hide in our bedrooms and it was terrible. I mean, the cops were always called at our house and we would hide. We would literally hide. And then I got to the point where the fights would start to get to be towards me and my brother. We would get involved. Um, because we, we, um, wouldn't get away fast enough, so we would get in the middle of it. And so, most of it was my mother. I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there. It was my mother. Um, I had a very good um, relationship with my father, um, but my mother, I, I did not have a very good relationship with her, and she, I guess, that made her jealous. And she actually had at one point, which she denies to this day, she denies a lot of the things she said to me in my past. And she denies a lot of the things she's done to me in my past. And that's why there's no hope of fixing that relationship. Um, because she will not own up to the fact of what she's done to me. Um, but she basically told me that I was an unwanted child. And that 
My father wanted me more than she did. She didn't want another child. My father wanted me. So, feeling unwanted at home was really, really hard. So, like, again, I said I hid. Flight. I hid. I hid from everybody. And then I started, like, she got to the point where I would lash out. I would lash out at her a lot. I finally just got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to deal with it anymore. There was actually one time where I actually walked home from school to my friend's house and didn't tell my mother where I was going. My mother had no idea where I was. My f I ended up calling my dad and telling him where I was. Um, and I got in a lot of trouble for that because I just did not want to go home. And I didn't want my friends to come to my house because I was so scared of what was going to happen and how they were going to see my mom react or if my mom was going to be in one of her phases. And she also kept me and my brother home a lot. Like, if we would try to go down the street to meet a friend or make a friend, we, like, had some friends that lived down the street. If we wandered off to go try and visit them, she wouldn't let us. And... So she made me kind of like have social anxiety. She created the social anxiety that I had. So I was afraid of new people. I was afraid to leave. I was afraid to do anything new. Because I was afraid of what my, my mother would think. And what my mother would do. Um, there was a lot of hard things in my life. Like I said, physical and mental. Um, it got to the point where I would, when I was depressed, I would binge eat. I would eat and eat and eat and eat and eat when I was depressed, but when I was stressed, I would, well, I would just not eat. I would just forget to eat and I would just go run. I would go drinking, I would go partying, I would, I would sneak out in the middle of the night and go to a friend's house and then come back at like three in the morning and before they were getting up for work. I would just go sneak off. And they never knew. They never knew. Um, I started smoking at a very young age. I would steal the cigarettes at first. It was, I would steal one and then I would steal a pack out of the cartons because my mom would always keep their cartons on top of the fridge. So I would steal a pack and I would hide them in my bedroom. And I started cutting. I, um, basically had a really, really rough time as a child. And then as I got older, I started dating. And I'm going to say from the age of 14 to 15, which is when I became more so dating and becoming serious with boyfriends. I actually got to the point where I was seeing multiple guys at once. And I'm not proud of it. But I was basically looking for love and the affection that I wasn't getting at home and men. And it was not good. I mean, I regret it to this day. I, I wish I would have never done that, but I know now why I did it. Um, I have a fear of doctors because of so many times I've had to deal with doctors telling me bad news or doc, you know. And my mom would always make it pretty, well, when my sister passed away, then my brother became the favorite. My mother, my, my mother, my, my brother, my sister was always her favorite until my sister passed away. And when my sister passed away, then my brother became the favorite. And again, I was just there. And the physical and mental abuse 
kept on and it got to the point where I physically lashed out against my mother on multiple occasions. And I finally just had a head enough. I'd had enough. Um, because she had decided to leave us and go live with a younger boyfriend that she had found. She made that choice. Not us. And at this point, my brother had already moved out. And she would come to our house in the middle of the night, me and my dad, and break in and cause fights with my dad. And I finally just had enough. I'm like, but you chose me. You chose to leave me. You chose to leave my dad. And I got fed up. So again, I was being arrested for domestic violence, even though I was trying to protect my father. Um, I had a hard time in school. I ended up dropping out of school. And so they tried to homeschool me, and they had sent a, a private tutor. And whenever the tutor would come to the house, I would get anxious immediately, and I would hide. And I wouldn't answer the door. So then I got in trouble with that because I wasn't doing that. So, I ended up having to go to a school hearing. At this point in my life, I had gotten into a serious relationship with an older guy, and he told me he would homeschool me because he was old enough to, and that was fine, and it was just me and my dad, and this is when my dad started really drinking heavily, and because of the skipping school and everything, it caught up with me, and I ended up actually having to go to a juvenile detention center for five days. Um, that was a hard time in my life. I was freaked out. It was out of my norm. I was terrified because I was in there with a lot of other girls that did not like me. And all I remember was the day that my dad and my boyfriend, fiance, whatever, that he was one of the many fiancés I had, picked me up. I swore that I was going to do the homeschooling and I actually stopped after I turned 17 and was legally able to sign myself out of school. I did. Um, and I got a full-time job because I wanted to be able to support myself. Um, so I used to go and stay the night at my boyfriend's house a lot, my fiance or whatever you want to call him. I had a lot of boyfriends and I had a lot of fiances. Um, I mean, they were pretty long-term relationships, but they were still like, Trying to find love in all the wrong places, I guess. Um, but I still have my issues with my anxiety. It's gotten better. I'm not exactly the same person I was. I have came out 
of my shell a little bit. Um, sharing with you guys has helped a lot, but I have not exactly shared a whole lot of my past with you guys. And due to that, I have now decided to share at least this small part of me, which is my anxiety disorder. I've been through many counselors and told I was bipolar, which I was not. I was diagnosed manic depressive, which I am not. Um, and that was all due to the fact that I was very, very young when they were diagnosing me and they weren't getting the proper diagnosis. Later on in life, I did find out that it was, it was anxiety that was creating all my issues and it was chronic anxiety. Um, I wasn't really depressed. I was just looking for a release of some sort, but my anxiety has kind of gotten in the way of a lot of experiences that I wish I would have not let it get in my way. That being said, I, um, you know, I quit school and I wish I would have finished and getting my GED was another thing. Getting my driver's license is another thing and that's why I don't drive because I let my anxiety rule me when it comes to driving. Um, I panic. I panic when I drive. Um, my anxiety is the reason why I don't have my first daughter. Because I was 19 and I was scared. So, they basically told, they told me they would do temporary custody. The, my daughter's grandmother told me she would do temporary custody until me and my fiance at the time, this was a total different fiance, fiance number three, got her stuff together and she would give her back. And we ended up splitting up. And when we split up, she basically allowed me to see her a couple times after me and her dad split up. And that's actually when I got with John. And because she couldn't handle the fact that I was not with her son anymore and I left and I chose to leave but she started not letting me see her and the last time I've seen her was on day after her first birthday we had a little party for her I had to meet her once and I haven't seen her since So I swore to myself that I wasn't going to let that happen again. And when I found out I was pregnant with my son, Logan, I was petrified. I was, I was scared that it was going to happen again. That I was going to have all those postpartum problems and anxiety disorder and chronic disorder. And I did. I had a lot of issues when he was born. And thank God for my husband because he helped me through that. And he stayed with me even though I had a hard time. And so when Caitlin was born, I went directly to a psychologist. 
and was diagnosed with my chronic anxiety and was put on meds for the first time in years because I was terrified of going. And when she started explaining the anxiety disorder to me, I started realizing that I had let my anxiety ruin my life, basically. I made a lot of bad choices in my life. And I'd gotten better. But it's still not easy, and I still have the, the problem with anything new. I get anxious. And I try to, I, I, I've explained this to Christine, I think, I think, and I hope she understands it as to, please don't get mad at me if I back out on things. And don't get mad at me if I don't always come through with things because it's not that I'm trying to hurt you and it's not to show this side of me in my videos, but I told you guys I wanted to be as honest as I possibly could. So, that being said, if if I don't, if, if if I don't answer you right away, or you say I'm having a bad day, just take it as a bad day, okay? Because sometimes I'm not going to be able to get the videos up when I say. And sometimes I'm not going to pull through and do what I say. But I have talked to Christine and my husband, and I have decided that once I get my insurance stuff taken care of, I will be going back to counseling. Because I know now that I need it more than ever, and now I have the time to do it. Because I used my job as an excuse not to do it. Again, because I was scared. And I was anxious about it, so I ran away from it. So, I just want you guys to know that anxiety is not an easy thing, and it's not something you can always see. A lot of people that see me online or that, they see me as a happy-go-lucky person who is full of smiles, and a lot of people who've just met me, like my customers, they think I'm the happiest person in the world because I put a fake smile on. Anxiety is not something you can see, but it's there. And it... And I'm not... I mean, I'm not depressed, I mean, I'm just anxious, but I'm, I regret. I have a lot of regrets. Because of choices that I have made and the fact that I still give in to my anxiety. 
And I really, I just don't want to get into it anymore. I'm tired of living like this. But I'm gonna go now, guys, because this video is getting very, very long. And I will record the Q&A later tonight. I just wanted to do this when nobody was home because I didn't want anybody around me when I recorded this because I just needed to get it out. Um, but basically that that's the anxiety part of it. And Christine, I'm sorry. If I've ever upset you. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. And please don't push me away because of this. Because you're the one person I don't want to lose. Besides my one but besides Jelly that I can trust. And it understands. And I'm sorry that I wasn't open with you before. It's hard for me. I try. Okay, well, that's well, I'm gonna go because this is like almost freaking 40 minutes long. I might actually have to split this up into two parts. And I'm um, sorry that you guys had to see me cry again. And I love you all. Bye. Where is my mouse? Why does this do this to me every time? Where is my mouse? I guess.